All right, so I'm back and I'm here to talk to you about Echo, a new Disney Plus series by Marvel. Who's the monster? So uh, before I go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's very helpful for the channel. Uh, so yeah, let's get into Echo. So just to be clear right up front, I was able to see episode one, two, and three. So I haven't seen the last two episodes, four and five. So all of five episodes are gonna be dropping on January 9th. So they're kind of pivoting from their usual format of releasing one episode uh, each week. Kind of going back to the way the Netflix show were being released back in the day with Dare Daredevil, uh, The Defenders, Jessica Jones, like all, you know, in the bitch wash format. So it's kind of interesting that they went back to that direction because uh, just my quick thoughts on, on the first three episodes. It's going to be a short review because I can't talk about the story and I, I can't talk about the show as a whole because I haven't seen the last two episodes. Uh, if I, I can say right up front that I like that a lot more than uh, Secret Invasion. Actually, I bailed uh, after two episodes of Secret Invasion to be real honest because it just wasn't for me. But with Echo, I'm really interested to see where this is going next. Uh, one of the reasons I really liked it so far, well, I, I wouldn't say really like it, but what the reason I'm enjoying it so far is it's a little bit more mature with his approach. Uh, they don't try to go for a joke every uh, every few seconds. It's a lot more uh, serious in terms of what the story is about and everything. I kind of like that it's a little bit more similar to those Netflix shows. So the show is created by uh, Marion Dare. She's a writer and uh, you know on the production staff of Better Call Saul. So I'm not saying it's on that level of quality, but it comes from someone who has a TV background and understand a little bit how to lay out the formula for a TV series. In the first uh, few, the first. 10 minutes they kind of tried to like cram as many tragedies as possible to make us like feel for the character that didn't really work for me it started and they were rushing the storyline a little bit going with flashbacks and everything i had trouble connecting it uh, with it at first but as the series progresses i kind of find myself uh more and more interested in where this is going the story itself obviously i cannot talk about the story itself uh, it's kind of lacking a little bit in trills uh, not like completely over the moon about the whole series, but it finds ways to entertain and one of those ways is with the fight scenes. I uh, really enjoy uh, how I'm able to see everything going on with the fight scenes. Uh, I'm not saying like it's on the, the level of quality of the raid or like the, the greatest fight scenes ever, but I do find a way to pull out entertaining fight sequences uh, in, in a couple of episodes. Each episode I kind of like as one good action set piece so far, so that's interesting. Also what I like is that there's some really good Native American actor uh, in there, uh, Tantu Cardinal. She's, she's been doing movies since the, the 70s and the 80s. Uh, she played in uh, Dance with the Wolves and recently we saw her in Killers of the Flower Moon. She's a really uh, integral part of that series and it, it's just really interesting to have her presence there. She's really good, but it's not only her, but there's a lot of supporting actors that kind of add play value to the series and uh, I really like how they, they, they the representation in the series is being done but I did see that the Chuck Tao Nation gave their stamp of approval on the series uh, I read an article of that that you know they they were really impressed by the series and everything and in a way I kind of feel like they're doing a good job on that on that end what I can say though is one of my friends his parents uh, they're you know he's from uh, the deaf community and I, I I've been able to uh, to know more and more people in the past year I did a video with an association and it was related with Deaf, with the deaf community. So from my own personal experience, from the people I know and everything, I really felt like uh, they did a good representation of the deaf community. I like how the people around uh, Maya, they're doing an effort to learn the sign language and everything. So just, just from what I can say on that level, I feel like the representation here is really well done and it kind of serves a purpose to the storyline. Just to go back on the, the fact that Maya, she's deaf, I uh, really love how sometimes they play with that in terms of sound design. So we're in the middle of a fight scene, it's the sound is just gonna like completely you know, like go mute and we can like kind of like be immersed. It kind of put the audience in uh, Maya's shoes during that fight sequences and it happens a couple of times, not just during fight, se fight scenes, but it's interesting how they play with the sound design uh, with, with the, that, 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 you know, that specific aspect of the, our main character. It's also the return of uh, Vincent and D'Onofrio as the Wilson Fisk. Great casting, uh, it's always been since day one with the, the Daredevil series, uh, always been a great casting choice and he continues here to shine. It's kind of cool to have him in the MCU. We'll see how it fits overall. But from what I saw those three episodes, it kind of seems like they're able 
to shift in terms of tone without uh, making it seem like it doesn't fit in the universe. It kind of fit in that MCU universe while being a little bit more serious than what we're, we might have been uh, used to. So yeah, in terms of fight scenes, solid fight scenes overall with like great, great uh, choreography. Uh, it's interesting like how you're able to see all the action uh, and they don't overdo it with the cuts and everything. It's well filmed overall and good, good, good stuff in terms of fight sequence because that's kind of like the appeal of the show. Uh, Maya, she's a badass, she, she's a fighter and, and there's also that aspect, it's being sold as kind of like this rated R, uh, you know, it's TVMA. There's an episode that kind of like starts with a flashback and they use a vintage look, kind of playing with the form. I appreciate that a lot, I, I won't say too much about that. And uh, yeah, the main actress who's playing uh, Maya, I'm probably mispronouncing her name, but uh, Alakwa Cox, she's, uh, she's also a Native American actress. Uh, she's an amputee, she has a prosthetic leg, and they kind of incorporate that in the story, which I thought was really interesting. I really love that they're putting her like in the center of the stage and she's like, it, this is her series and she's nailing it. It's kind of a challenging role to do. Uh, she cannot talk. It, in a way, we kind of really relate to her character. Uh, it didn't took long for me to love that, that, that character, so that's something that they really were able to pull off. Uh, so if, you know, if you're not on board with Maya, you're not gonna be on board with the show, but I was. It's also the fact that she's kind of like an, an anti-hero and we've seen those uh, those kind of approach especially with Sony like they're doing it bad with Morbius and Venom not a fan of the Venom movies so it's interesting when you put someone who's not necessarily a good guy and you or a good girl and you put them at, like at the center stage of a series uh, if I have to give uh, Echo a rating for those three episodes so far I would give it a 7 out of 10 but just with an asterisk because I haven't seen the whole thing it might be like I said a little bit too slow at times but the action is good Good. Uh, it's nice to kind of feel that you're back in that Daredevil universe while still fitting into the MCU uh, mold, if I may say so. So uh, yeah, a 7 out of 10 for Echo. Uh, I appreciate it so far. Uh, looking forward to see where this is uh, heading. It's a, I think it's a limited series. It's a mini series. I feel like after those two episodes, it's kind of going to be wrapping up. But I have a feeling we might see her in the Daredevil series that they're doing. So we'll see what's next for her character. Uh, looking forward to see the rest of it. So yeah. This is Echo by Marvel, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back. I, I might.